The Grado SR60 and 80 have been around for a long time, but how are they in the new X revision? Let's check it out. Hey, I'm DMS, you're watching The Headphone Show, and this is the new Grado SR60X, and I have the Grado SR80X with me as well. Let's talk about the build and comfort of all these, and then we'll get into sound. So Grados are not particularly known for the most stunning build in the world, but this is also a pretty inexpensive headphone. The SR60X is around $100, with its big brother the SR80X being a little bit more. These have the S pads on them by default, making them on-ear. They tilt, they swivel, they don't tilt a ton, and they are held up and down by a friction mechanism here. Now the biggest visual change between these and the previous revision is that these have a braided cable, still attached unfortunately, and it does bind up depending on how these are wound. You can't really seem to get it unbound no matter how much you twist and turn it. But these do also now have padding in the headband, something that I wish they had done on the SR325X. I've known some people that have had these that have lasted for years. I have a few pairs myself that have lasted for years. It really kind of depends on how you treat them. While I'm not a particular fan of the construction, I can't deny the fact that they do take a reasonable enough beating if you just throw them in a backpack, they tend to survive fine. Just, you know, don't go throwing them against brick walls or anything. Now, like all the other Grados, you can swap these pads out relatively easily. I prefer these with the G pads, but we'll talk more about why in sound. And finally, they terminate to three and a half millimeter uh, with a quarter inch adapter. Now these, you can power off pretty much anything. A phone, a laptop, you don't need a fancy DAC amp, and they're really not gonna respond much to tube amps, but the option's there if you want. Now, we're gonna talk about subjective sound first and then objective sound with measurements. Let's get into subjective. If you're not familiar with the way Grados sound, well, they are a bit bright. At least these models are. I have a preference towards the SR325X, which is a bit more expensive of a model than these, but this isn't a terrible headphone for someone's first entry into an open back. There's not a ton of options at the $100 price point. There are things like the SHP9600, but I do think that while the Grados are bright, they do have a bit more flavor than the 9600 does. They don't have much sub bass. The mid-range sounds a bit more tamed, especially compared to the treble, and that can definitely lead to sibilance at higher volumes. As a result of this, female vocals are not a strong suit at all. Male vocals do okay though, and piano specifically really shines. But none of that is what makes Grado special. What makes Grado special is their staging. Even their cheapest headphones have a very unique sounding stage and presentation, especially with the G pads that also improve the tuning. They bring up the low end a little bit and make the treble considerably less peaky, but don't fix it entirely. These are not going to give you the same kind of stage you will get out of an expensive headphone. You won't get the same stage you get in a Sundara, an 800S, or anything like that. But you do get something that is, without a doubt, unique. And for that, I do enjoy the SR60X, but interestingly enough, the 80X, I can't find a single thing it brings to the table that makes it better than the 60X. We'll cover that more in objective sound. Another thing we need to cover is detail and imaging. Imaging with a Grado is not exceptional, especially with these, imaging is just vague. You get something kind of like with the 6XX, it's a very three blob left, right, and center. It can become an out of your head sound, which is nice with the staging, but I don't expect crazy imaging out of a headphone that is also not that detailed. It does exceed other things in detail like the K361 and K371, and I would even go so far as to say that it rivals something like the HD58X, but only in terms of detail and imaging. Beyond that, something like a Sundar or a 6XX will be considerably more detailed, have better tuning and better comfort, but won't have the same unique stage that you get from a Grado. So with that said, let's talk about objective sound, and then we'll talk about the conclusions of this headphone. This is the Grado SR60X with the stock S pad. As you can see here, well, it doesn't have hardly any bass. The mid range is relatively flat, but does slope down the lower you get, and the treble, eh, there is a lot of it. There is definitely a lot of it. This, however, is the G pad. 
And while not perfect, you can tell that it does make a big difference. We actually have bass now and the treble, while still a bit more excited in the five to seven K range, well, the rest of it makes a lot more sense. In this configuration, I like the Grado SR60X a lot more, and the G-Pads considerably improve the already very interesting stage. If you are thinking about this headphone, I know it adds an extra $20, but really consider getting the Geekria G-Pads for it, because that is the way to use the SR60X. Now, comparatively, you're probably wondering, well, why are we just talking about the 60X? Why not the 80? Well, here, let me grab it real quick. It's the same headphone. Build-wise across the board, I cannot find a difference aside from the labeling, SR60 or SR80X. And then when we measure them, well, they're the same. They literally measure the same. Even with the G-Pad, which is extremely position dependent, they measure the same. I am very tempted to believe that this is literally the same headphone uh, with a different label on it. And that may not be the case, but if it isn't the case, there is not a discernible auditory or visual or build difference between these headphones, at least that I can find. Now, that was different in the last generation, the SR60E versus the SR80E, but in these, somebody's gonna have to point it out because I just don't see it. Now, as you can tell, objectively, these are not super targeted here. They are going to lean bright basically no matter what pads you put on them. And if you like that sound and if you really want that unique staging, well, the 60X and the G pads are the way to go. But with all that said, it's obvious that these are not designed for objectivists. Let's talk about conclusions. Obviously, I've had a lot of negative things to say about these headphones and a few positives as well. So do I think they're worth it? Should you buy one? Well, if you already have a collection, you just wanna try the Grado sound, sure, pick up an SR60X, why not? If you already know you like the Grado sound and you want something that's worthy of being a daily driver, well, you should skip both of these and go to the SR325X, a headphone that I consider to be considerably better that still maintains all of the things I like about a Grado. And that's better on both a subjective technical level and also an objective level. If this is gonna be your first headphone, you're operating on a budget, I would say for tuning, you should get the K361 instead. It's the same price and is tuned considerably better than actually a lot of expensive things on the market. But if tuning is not your primary concern and what you want is a mix of detail and a little bit of sparkle and some of that open back magic, well, the 60X actually makes sense despite my complaints. So is it a bad headphone? Well, objectively, yes, and subjectively, no, I do enjoy it. It's definitely not perfect, but at its price point, it fills a need. And if you like something brighter leaning, well, the SR60X with the G-Pads is not a bad option. But if you got all the way to the end of this video, you can definitely say you know the upsides and the downsides of this new headphone. So I think that is all we need to say, and I'm going to wrap this one up. Guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, leave a like down below, a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future and what you think about these headphones. If you want to get active in the community, you can on the forum. So always don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this. Till the next one. Peace.